But a mining nerd, please come to the stage and tell us why that's the game that matters. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning, NFT Talent. How are you feeling so far? I feel like maybe some of those uh, Fraz energy drinks have not made their way out to this stage yet. But let's just try it one more time and forgive me, right? Because I'm a strong believer that content is everything. And when you're building in this space, in the attention economy, say it with me, everything is? Content. Content. We're making content right now. We'll talk about this in just a moment here. I actually need to know where my, where my tool is to advance this. There it is. It's been cleverly hidden with large red and green buttons. But my name is Seth Estrada. I run the uh, channel Mind Your Biz. I work with the world's top influencers. I personally gave the invite to BitBoy Crypto and Crypto Wendio, the two largest North American influencers, to come here and, in fact, babysat Wendy so she would jump on the plane and make it all the way out to Estonia. But it's my pleasure to talk to you about this. This. By show of hands, who here is a builder in the space? Shout out to you. That's great. We're going to poke holes in what you've built in the next 20 minutes and uh, discover that 22% chance also. But talk to you about the top five reasons. Uh, this is my alternate title as to what your users are doing to get wrecked in the first place and probably what you're doing to get wrecked in the first place. Seems like valuable information to know, right? So let's, let's go through. Without further ado, there's bad news. We'll just start there. I'm not going to give you the option. There's bad news. Easily, at least a 78% chance that you will get wrecked at some point trying to purchase, hold, trade, exchange, LP, or do any num number of other complex financial things with funny pictures of monkeys. Pretty good chance. But it's not all bad news. There's good news too. And that is that you're not alone. Your mom's probably also going to get wrecked. So you have somebody to commiserate with you. And again, we don't think this is okay. We don't condone this. We don't want people to actively get destroyed trying to interact with the technologies that we're building in DeFi and in digital assets. But we know it's going to happen. And so at least we know how to find others. We can discuss what went wrong. And we can go through a, a panel just like this with some crazy guy from North America telling you that your product is bound to fail. But here's why. You might think, OK, great. It's another polemic on why hardware wallets are so essential or why seed phrase security is the most important thing. What about BIP39? Is it outmoded? Should we do away with seed phrases altogether? What is uh, key derivation anyway? Why do we have to use these, at this point, we think archaic methods? Is MPC broken? Should we go to entirely hardware-based security? Should we rely on Intel to allow our users to maybe get wrecked on the server side? I don't think that matters so much. I think we're asking the wrong question when we ask about what the best brand of hardware security is. And we try to tell users, you just have to adapt to doing it this way. And that's actually not the 78% chance of getting wrecked anyway, is which brand of hardware wallet you've chosen. If you go with a ledger, they'd be very happy, right? I, I am an affiliate. They'd be very happy that I mentioned their name on stage. But if you go with a ledger, it's not any less risk of you losing your digital assets than using a Trezor or something by SafePal or any of the other number of hardware wallet manufacturers. It's a necessary step, but it's not sufficient for you or your users to prevent having some kind of a security vulnerability or a problem in DeFi or with digital assets. No, you have other problems. Let me go through these in reverse order. Like I mentioned, these are the top five. We'll start with number five, and that is you're using a hot wallet at all. You're interacting in most cases. Now, I won't ask anybody to raise hands here because there's, a, there's an operational security component. I wouldn't want your friends or your associates to know that this applies to you. But there's a very strong chance that 78% of this audience or of the attendees at this conference use primarily hot wallets. And if that's you, you don't need to signify that that's happened, but I am going to call you to repentance. A little bit of a North American zealot. I'll call you to repentance. Stop using primarily hot wallets. Right? That's your issue. We'll give you the tactic to overcome that. This is more of a workshop, in case you haven't figured that out at this point. This is meant to be something you can use as actionable advice and bring back to your communities and just think about in terms of 
architecting better ways for your end user to interact with your product or to protect your community, whatever your responsibility is in the space. But number four, you're not using password management. By the numbers, very few people do. And I know that adoption is going up on products like Bitwarden, fully open source. Hopefully five years from now that's still the case when this is played back. But fully open source, password management, local password management, hardware backed password management. There are so many solutions and people fail to use them. It's easier than trying to use your brain. We're very bad at creating randomness, entropy. We're terrible. The concept of brain wallets disappeared in the Bitcoin community almost 10 years ago because it's just not good. So why do we store all of our passwords that way? If you're a Web3 adjacent product or platform, you're asking, <laughs> you're asking your users to make that the weakest link, potentially, in logging into your ecosystem. So it doesn't matter what hardware wallet they have, at the point of interacting on chain, if with your platform, they can lose everything through bad credential management anyway. So what do we do? We manage passwords. I know, this is, this is brilliant. Brilliant advice. But most of us don't do it. I'm not gonna ask you to raise hands, but you know if it applies to you, and there's some people right now who I promise are sweating more than I am. Number three, top vector. You're clicking weird links. You're always, somebody DMs you on Twitter and they say, you don't get it. This is the alpha. You know, I was in Times Square for NFT NYC. And my wife is here, she can attest. This guy runs into me in Times Square and says, you don't, you don't get it. Pepe is gonna be huge. He was right, of course. I faded, in, I faded generational wealth. I walked away from generational wealth because I thought it was an unqualified referral because I don't click weird links. And the, the non-zero chance of getting totally wrecked based on this random person's recommendation, even though they're known in the NFT community and they're known in the DGEN community, the chance was too great. And I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be security minded first and you know, do the responsible thing and throw away generational wealth. Clearly the tactic is to check all links. There are solutions that are coming out. There's quite a bit of work being done in this space in terms of smart contract checking as well. I won't belabor the point here or name any of them by name. Uh, because I'm not a spokesperson for any of them and it will change in the future, right? We, we need to continue to work on this problem in particular because we have the technology to crawl ahead a few steps on these links. It's not impossible. The web has been around, we have standards. We can overcome this. But the standards aren't clicking the links. You are, and your users are. And they haven't been taught not to. Social engineering wins again. Number two, you think that PFPs are actual people, that they IRL people. You think that because somebody has an NFT on Twitter, and maybe they're verified, maybe they have Twitter blue, maybe they have the hexagonal logo, the hexagonal PFP, so you know they've had to connect and authenticate on chain. And you believe, erroneously, that they're a real human, or that their Twitter account has not been hacked. How do you know? That was rhetorical, obviously. You can answer if you want. But how do you know? I, I contend that you don't know. On the flip side, be a little paranoid. We were talking earlier, the builders were talking earlier about this value. This is the value you bring to your community is to presume that anybody that isn't you, if you're building, or anybody that isn't you, if you're leading a community, everybody that is not the primary source of truth is a scammer and that 78% and that of the time they should even be suspect of communications they get from you, especially if it comes in DMs. Do they know not to answer unsolicited DMs from you? This is a human behavior. You'll notice we haven't really talked about the tech. We haven't really gone that deep on the tech. We've only mentioned it parenthetically. And then number one, you keep getting wrecked because you give out too much personally identifying information. You're posting selfies at places like NFT Town. I'm kidding, this is a very safe place to be. You're totally okay to post as much on social media as you want here and please do. And tag NFT Talent. But you're posting selfies everywhere that you go, right? You're in 
downtown LA, you're in the garment district because you went away from the arts district, you already went over to the Super Chief Gallery there, you talked to the owners, you saw the artists, you shook their hand, you said, that's amazing, I want to buy five of those, let me sweep the floor. But then you're posting selfies everywhere, real time. People know your location. You may not be putting any kind of geotagging on your photos, but people are pretty smart. And image detection algorithms, computer vision, for the last 10 years, even just in the open source libraries, also pretty smart at object detection. Also pretty good at figuring out what's in your background, where you are. That's just photos. Hang in with my bestie. Cool. Where? Tag somebody? Awesome. On Facebook, for anybody here who still uses it, I urge you, please, run. But anybody here still uses it, they know entirely who your family is. They've got you where it hurts. I mean, this is like a really bad Liam Neeson movie. They know exactly how to get at you at all times and who to, you know, squeeze to get leverage on you. We just give it out freely. We still give it out freely. In 2023, we're giving this information out all the time. We're a leaky sieve of personal information. And clearly, the response is don't tell them anything. But here's more. Go beyond. If you're on those major platforms, there is no KYC rule in terms of what you post and when. You can do a little bit of obfuscation. You can do your own timed release of personally identifying information. So instead of posting it the day of, post it the day after. Instead of posting it real time, DM that, on, uh, preferably on an, on an encrypted chat application, to people who need to know when you're on location, going somewhere, and coordinating. Um, and obviously WhatsApp is not as secure as we've all been led to believe. We know this for years. Some of these so-called encrypted chat applications are very compromised, so be, be choosy there, but publicly poison the data well. Don't give these platforms a fully clear picture of exactly where you are at all times. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, something that, that may hit all of us here in this room very personally. Yes, even LinkedIn. We seem to trust them and believe that somehow they're more virtuous than the other platforms. I assure you, they are not. They're just mining our information. So be very cautious. Be very selective. Figure out how you want to self-represent and what the implications are for your journey into DeFi and NFTs. It seems unrelated, but as we know with regulation, it's becoming increasingly relevant and correlated. All of this data set, everything that we've given, becomes a massive data set on us that's then correlated with every bit of on-chain activity, which of course is recorded immutably into the past and impossible to decouple moving forward. So everything we've given them is presumed to be true. Well, make it not true. But let's go beyond that. Tell them something that's a little bit out there. You can throw some curveballs. Post something publicly that's a little bit silly. Um, clearly, Sanders taken this to an extreme, right? You can, but bring the banana with you everywhere you go, internationally. Make it a theme in your life in terms of how you post your information and what any interested attacker could discover about you and how they might want to leverage that against you with your DeFi or NFT or cryptocurrency journey. We already know. On the on-chain side, it's immutable, very easy to discover what we're doing, not as easy to discover who we are, pseudonymous, a little bit abstracted, until we fully correlate and connect the dots for our attackers. So I think it's totally okay. They have information asymmetry, they know about us, we don't know who's interested in us, we can give them a little bit of a curveball now and then. I think that's totally fair in terms of the rules of engagement. And I don't think it even breaks terms of service if you read them carefully. Call it a story, if you will, an allegory. But to recap, here's your wrecked recap. You're a hot mess because you use hot wallets. You have problems with your passwords getting cracked and hacked because you're not using anything that's uncrackable. You're using your own head. You always check on link, you always click on links, you don't care about provenance, you're just chasing the, you know, the, uh, the dopamine rabbit online, so you go wherever the hell anybody sends you. You believe in Muppets online, you actually think some of these people with cool looking PFPs are real, and uh, you are, you've had a, a, a chronic TMI uh, problem on social media. 
Let me just check in with you. Without revealing this applies to you. Does, do any of you know somebody that this applies to? And by all means, I need some validation there. You can give me a show of hands. Do you know somebody that these things apply to? I know I do. So, soulless shill, shameless. If you want to learn more about it, I'm online. I register for the keyword, mine your biz, as in the possessives, mine, your, B-I-Z, everywhere online. And then I've popped up a new site here just for this event, just to, just for kicks, called Unwrecked Online, uh, with a, some follow-up. If you'd like to know more about it or you're curious about this content and actually doing the deep dive into some of the tech. I think this is where it matters though. The rubber meets the road in social engineering. That's why we're all here. But uh, that's what I've got for you and I'm happy to do Q&A. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna jump on stage. Yeah. So I am also a content creator. All right, so, cheers. And um, there is a, there's a, a thing that we do as influencers. We talk, we're very good at talking, we're very good at presenting an opinion on things and that can be dangerous. And I wonder how you feel about that because I found myself in a situation where I'm enthusiastic about something. I talk about it, I present a thesis on it, but then that becomes a purchasing decision moment for people who consume the content. How do you feel about that? Because it's as much social engineering as the tactics you described up here. Absolutely. Uh, and I had personal experience with this in 2018 with a, uh, a mining hardware creator, which if you know your blockchain history, if you've been in the space for some time, that's a very, that's fraught with uh, consumer peril. Because you can pre-purchase something that doesn't fulfill for two years, they can promise, you know, to high heaven, that it's in production, right? It's in development, it's over there in the lab. They've got the FPGA prototype of, of what they're building, already running a custom bitstream. I'll show you all the videos and you behind the scenes footage. Because I don't think most people understand what you're just doing <laughs> <about that. laughs> Yeah, we, I, I promised, yeah, no, no jargon. I went straight to it. Um, so, I made the mistake of getting mixed up with people who sell mining hardware some time ago. And the problem with mining hardware is I can tell you that behind any black box is a mining rig that is powered by some new fusion reactor that's going to revolutionize Bitcoin mining, take over the industry. If you take it on faith, I can pretty much extract as much money from you as you're willing to give me. It's like the VC game, right? I can sell you vaporware for years. And yeah, I, I still, to this day, get, uh, I call them nasty grams, little messages from folks who say, hey Seth, thanks for helping me waste 20,000 quid on pre-purchasing something that never fulfilled. And I, all I did was interview somebody. I, I didn't think I was shaping consumer behavior, but to your point, even the most subtle indication for some people, they believe it's, it's alpha, and they'll, they'll race in to buy. Absolutely, well there's also this idea now that our data is fuel for AI. So all of the data that we're giving to the internet is now becoming the way in which AI learns about us and becomes smarter. And, and I wonder if you have an opinion on that at all. Absolutely. Uh, AI is, uh, I think it's going to become a, uh, an, an absolutely incredible servant, but it would be a terrible master if we put it in that position. And I think, sadly, we're, we're increasingly putting it in that position where we don't know what the ramifications are. And I'm, I, don't mean, I don't mean AGI, where, where we, it will become our overlord, literally. Uh, or in some literal sense, but just that those who do control the terms and conditions of different platforms, those who write laws, that they may enable AI as it builds these profiles and, and predictive models of what we'll do, may enable it too much. And uh, before you know it, yeah, potentially we're, we're arrested of things or convic convicted and accused of things we, we haven't done yet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we were talking earlier about abstracting away the difficulty of blockchain. A hardware wallet is a difficult decision because it makes life more difficult for you. It introduces friction where we're talking about reducing friction. So there's a tension here in how we make blockchain Web3 palatable for people. What do you think about that? I think we've, it's been a series of compromises and uh, for those who know the phrase, turtles all the way down, I think we've been riding atop turtles all the way down for many years now and unfortunately, decreasing friction, we would have to cut down a few layers of turtles to, to get to the base layer and start figuring out how we decrease, decrease the friction from there and uh, build as close to the, the base layer as possible. But what do you mean by that, build as close to the base layer as possible? Because 
people want things to be easy. Yes. They don't want to have to work for something. And yet, crypto is all about that. But it's also about making it as easy to grift people as possible in some cases. No, absolutely. Yeah, so there's a bit of an issue. Uh, so, I just, uh, so it's just a, uh, a turn of phrase. Turtles all the way down, meaning that we've abstracted the process of interacting with the blockchain by creating a certain type of wallet. Now we've abstracted it again by creating an application programming interface, an API. And now we've abstracted it again by running a hot wallet that is run in somebody's browser that then requires a plugin architecture that may or may not exist two years from now. At the time of our recording right now, Google is removing certain plugin architectures from their Chromium uh, code base. So MetaMask, as it existed, say, three years ago, will not be the same three years from now on that platform. So that's like so many turtles, they're all moving around. They're all just riding atop each other's backs and hoping that they stay balanced. And then on the very top layer, now you may have potentially a hardware wallet that does the, the signing, but it's so important. Um, hence, the presentation on user behavior where if we can delete some of those turtles, human nature doesn't change so fast. At least, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken. In my experience, human nature doesn't change that fast. We do want convenience, and we will sacrifice some security. We'll sacrifice some anonymity for, uh, for a sense of security and for convenience. But if we can get rid of some of, the, uh, some of those faulty layers, some of the layers that are more likely to slip out and cause breakage right, in the, in the stack of turtles, then the user can you know, ride closer. And even if it's somewhat easy, even if we make the, that next layer somewhat simple, as a user interface and a user experience, I still think we need to get closer to where the on-chain activity happens and give that user more sovereignty and more choice. It's going to be a difficult battle to fight. I'm curious, in this room, how many people have run a node on a layer one blockchain? Wow. So that's three people. Running a node sucks balls. It's hard. It is a pain in the ass <laughs> to keep your node running at like 100%. Yeah. But, I mean, you're a miner. It's, it's a pain in the ass, right? It is. It is. And actually, uh, mining, contributing hash rate is much easier than just than running a, a node that has perfect or four nines of uptime or five nines of uptime. It's very challenging. Well, thanks very much, Seth. And I would like to remind everyone that this isn't the only stage you have here. We also have the uncurated stage, we have the workshop stage, and we have the uh, next stage as well. Uh, coming up next, we will have a panel building in a very model. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. And if you ever want some evidence of why being a content creator is so powerful, Seth, what a great speaker. <laughs> um, we had Adam talking about.